Hallelujah. Welcome once again to God's word. Hallelujah. Such an encouraging word that the Lord gives you. Hallelujah. If you are going through any problem, trials, tribulation, or you are feeling worried, Hallelujah. God gives you a word of encouragement, my dear brother, my dear sister. Psalm 68, 20 says, God is to us a God of acts of salvation. Hallelujah. Salvation does not mean eternal life only. Salvation means saved. Saved from your problems here also. In your spirit, soul and body. And to God, the Lord belong escapes from death. There may be escape situations. Like the word of God very clearly says in the book of Psalm 23 verse 4. Even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. There might be valleys of death, but they are only shadows. They are never the real thing. Hallelujah. So my dear brother, my sister, put your trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's continue with the word in the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. It says, But Israel shall be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. Amen. So when the Lord saves you, He saves you forever. It is not that He saves you for a time or a season and after that He discards you. No. That is a world, that is a way of the world. You know, there are many people who use other people. They are so friendly with you. They are your buddy, chum, you know, friends, friends. Oh, he will die for you. He will appear to die for you. Hallelujah. Until he gets what he wants from you. After that, he will just spit you out. Like you spit out chewing gum, no? Hallelujah. You eat the thing after all the sweet and the flavor and all that is over. Then it becomes absolute rubbish. There is no taste. There is no use. Then you spit it out. Similarly, people will use you like chewing gum. Oh, they will be, you will be so intimate with them. He will be so intimate with you and, you know, spending time with you. After you have exhausted or finished being useful to him, and he needs nothing more from you or he has obtained whatever he wanted from you, he will spit you out. Or like this beetle nut, you know, people chew beetle. It's very tasty. I mean, I guess it must be tasty. Hallelujah. Otherwise they will not spoil their mouth and everything, eating that. They chew, chew, pan and everything, everything. After it, out it goes. It's, that is what the world does. But our God is not a God like that. When he saves you, he serves you to eternity. He, wants, he saves you because He wants you to spend eternity with Him. And have you thought of eternity? It is forever and ever and ever and ever. You can go on till you die, ever. It will never end. Hallelujah. So it says, Isaiah 45, 17, But Israel shall be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. You shall never be ashamed. Because when you have Jesus as your Lord and Master, I want to tell you, you become a son and a daughter of God. Uh, like the word says in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18, that we both by one spirit have access to the Father. So once you have access to the Father, you come there, not as foreigners or strangers. Next word says, you are no longer foreigners or strangers, but with the fellow saints, you are members of the household of God. You are a son and a daughter of God. My dear brother, my dear, don't have any identity crisis. You are not a stranger or a foreigner as far as God is concerned. You are his son or his daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there is no need to be afraid or ashamed. I will tell you something. Let's read from the word in the book of Romans chapter 10. Very, very covenant promise. Very, very interesting and a word of assurance. Hallelujah. The word of God says very clearly says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verses 11 says this. For the scripture says... Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Amen. Here also, you shall not be ashamed. So if you believe in him, he shall not put you to shame, my dear brother, my sister. Because that is why Paul again, I mean the Holy Spirit through Paul again, in Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because for whoso believeth, it is a power of God unto salvation, for the Jew first and then for the Gentile. So because I know that it is a power of God unto salvation. This salvation is not just salvation, eternal life salvation, but it is a salvation which I enjoy, I enter into, even while I am here in the land of the living. The salvation in my spirit, my soul and my body. I am not ashamed of that. To put my trust in Him. Hallelujah. To believe. Whoso believeth. So belief is the primary condition 
or the qualifying qualifier for you to enter into that confidence or the trust. Hallelujah. So it says very clearly, for the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Definitely believe in him, my dear brother, my sister. And the greatest benefit of that belief is God so loved the world, John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son as a substitutionary sacrifice for you and for me. That whoso believeth in that, him, him, in the finished work of the cross of Calvary, in the substitutional sacrifice, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So he saves you from perishing. He saves you from eternal death. And he gives you, because of your faith, because of your belief in Jesus, eternal life. He gives you a right to become a son and a daughter of God. Hallelujah. My dear brother, my dear sister, you need to understand, the scripture uses so many superlatives about the ability of God to save you. If you will turn with me, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 25. That also gives such a great promise of God that those who come to him. Hallelujah. He says, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. He is able to save you to the uttermost. There is nothing more superlative beyond the uttermost. Are you with me? So, my dear brother, my dear sister, our God, Jesus Christ is able to save you to the uttermost when you come to God through him. And he always lives to make intercession for you and for me. So we don't need another intercessor. We don't need another saint to pray to. Pray to Jesus. My dear brother, my dear sister, pray to Jesus and not to a saint or a man or a woman. Or don't pray to any idol. Pray to Jesus, the living God. He is the living God. He is the name above all names. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. The word of God says in the book of Philippians chapter 2 that every knee shall bow before him in worship in heaven, on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ, him only is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. My dear brother, my sister, I urge you today, once again I beg you, accept Jesus as your only Lord, Master and Savior. And you will be saved. Confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. This is not my word, it is the word of God in the book of Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. Again, Psalm. I want to read out two more Psalms to you. Hallelujah. About the covenant promise of God. Hallelujah. Psalm 37 verse 25. 37, 25. Says very clearly without a shadow of doubt. Hallelujah. I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. You will never be forsaken. Nor his descendants begging bread. You don't have to beg. God will provide you everything that you need. He will never leave you nor forsake you, my dear brother, my dear sister. Because God says in Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There is another great word of assurance in the book of Psalm 34 verse 5. It again says, Hallelujah. Why don't I read from 35, 34 verses 4 to 7. It is too good a promise. Receive it, my dear brother. Receive it in faith. He says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. They looked to him. Their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. Hallelujah. 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 This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. And he delivers them. My dear brother, my dear sister, what more an assurance do you need? Our God is telling you, I will protect you. I will provide for you. I will make your face shine. Nobody looking upon you will, will ever look upon you scornfully. Or, you know, with, uh, with, uh, with you know, disgust. No. Actually, you will be respected. They will look upon you with respect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my dear brother, my sister, today our God wants to bless you. Bless you beyond measure that you cannot even think 
That is why Ephesians 3.20 says, And to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly, much more than you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Continuing the next word, the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18. He says, For thus says the Lord who created the heavens. It is God who created the heavens. It is not a big bang theory, my dear brother, my sister. Otherwise, if it was a big bang theory, hallelujah, there would be so many other big bangs and there would be total destruction. But today there is perfect harmony. Not only in this world here, in this earth, not only really in our solar system, not only really in the Milky Way, not only really in the whole of the environment, you know, the heavens. There is perfect harmony. Unless there was a God who created it, it cannot be accidental, my dear brother, my dear sister. It cannot be accidental. It is the wisdom of an almighty God. Hallelujah. He says, I created the heavens. That is where God says, heaven is my throne. And the earth that you are relying upon, that you are holding on to, is only my footstool. Don't you want to experience my adoption? And then you can be with me seated in the heavenlies. Are you with me? Do you want to restrict your prosperity to this world only? Which is kept for destruction. Or do you want to keep your prosperity with me? Because God says in the book of Ephesians, God's word says, in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 onwards, when you read 20 onwards, and to he is seated in the heavenlies, far above every principality and power, every dominion and might, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. Amen. And Ephesians 2, 6 says, And we, the church, are seated him with him in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. So he created the heavens and the earth. It is not a big bang theory. It is God himself who said, Let there be light and there was light. Let there be the firmament and there was a firmament. He created everything by the spoken word. Only man, because he was so precious to him, he created with his own hands. Amen. Then he says, who is God? God is the one who created. Then it says, who formed the earth and made it? He's the one who formed the earth. Like I told you earlier, when you read the word in the book of Genesis chapter 1, it is clear beyond a shadow of doubt that he created the earth. Then he continues to say, and he established it. He established everything with perfect order. The, ve the vegetation, the, 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 the birds that are flying, the animals that are walking on the ground, the, the creatures that are creeping all over the world, uh, ground, world, earth, the fish that are swimming in the waters, the stars, the moon, the sun, the whole firmament, everything in a perfect order. Hallelujah. So that he created everything for man. Hallelujah. He established it. Who did not create it in vain? It was not without a plan or a purpose. The purpose of creating all this is for man. So my dear brother, my dear sister, do not be a slave or a servant of creation. You be a slave and a servant of the creator. Do not plan your life according to the position of the moon or the stars or the sun or any animal. Do not worship any animal. Are you with me? Or any inanimate object, you make it into the form of a man or a woman or an animal. And don't worship it. Because God, the invisible God, this God who is spirit, created it. Amen. So he said, I did not create it in vain. I created it with a purpose. Let us read about the purpose. Hallelujah. I mean, there is no time to read the whole. I suggest that you read the whole of Genesis chapter 1, complete. But I am just, for paucity of time, I am just reading the book of Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. Verse 26 onwards. Then God said, Let us, that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. 
in the image and likeness of god he created him male and female he created them and god blessed them next word 28 and god blessed them granting them certain authority and said to them be fruitful multiply and fill the earth and subjugate it putting it under your power and rule over that is to dominate the fish of the sea the birds of the air every living thing that moves upon the earth hallelujah then it says behold god said behold i have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the entire earth and every tree which has fruit yielding seed it shall be food for you and to all the animals on the earth and to every bird of the air and everything that moves on the ground to everything in which there is breath of life i have given every green plant for food and it was so because he commanded it hallelujah god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and he validated it completely and there was and there was evening and there was morning a sixth day amen today you need to understand god created the whole universe for you he did not create it in vain he created it he did not create it in vain he created it with a purpose then it says who formed it to be inhabited i am the lord and there is no other there is no other god but yahovah no other god but jesus there is no other god the holy spirit the triune god hallelujah that is why god says hear o israel the lord thy god is one so the one god and you shall love that god that one god that triune god with all your heart your mind your soul and your strength do you do that my dear brother it is a command of god you shall not what shall i say partition your love between god and a saint no your affection your love your devotion your trust your your what shall i say your reliance you should not share that with anyone and um, uh, more than anything else the glory don't share the glory that exclusively belongs to god with anyone else hallelujah then it says again and next verse the book of isaiah chapter 45 verse 18 says i have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth I did not say to the seed of Jacob seek me in vain I the Lord speak righteousness I declare things that are right Our God the very nature of God is righteousness and that he gave to you at the cross at Calvary You never earned it you never deserved it but he gave it to you righteousness life they are all the same That is why he who knew no sin 2 Corinthians 5:21 He who knew no sin was made sin for us that you and I might become the righteousness of God in him says he says i did not speak anything in secret i have made everything public that is why when when uh, when uh, the people came and accused jesus that he is subverting the people he is uh, he is trying to rebel against the roman empire which might bring about destruction for the jewish people he said i have never spoken anything in secret i have spoken everything in the open i am not cons- uh, conspiring to do anything are you with me similarly god has given you revelation knowledge today what the church lacks is wisdom spirit of wisdom and revelation of jesus christ that is why they are groping in the dark saying everything is dark we don't understand we don't comprehend open your eyes turn to jesus and then the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you may be able to know what is the hope of your calling in christ jesus you may be able to discern and find out what is the glory that is waiting to be revealed in you you will also understand what is the exceeding greatness of that power of the holy spirit that is working in you that spirit which raised jesus from the dead is with you if you are in christ if you are born again hallelujah so he says very clearly i have not spoken in secret or in a dark place i have not tried to hide anything god says i am the light of the world then he tells you and me that we are the light of the world and no one keeps a light under a bushel but it is kept on a lamp stand so that the light would shine to the whole world my dear brother my dear sir let your light shine hallelujah hallelujah it says 
I have not kept uh, spoken to you in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Abraham, seek me in vain. When you seek the Lord, you will find him. Hallelujah. Without a shadow of doubt, you will find him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. There is only things right with God. And the righteousness means right standing with God. It is the very nature of Christ to be right. The truth. That is why when you read the word in the book of John chapter 17 verse 17 it says Sanctify them by your word. My word is truth. My word is truth. There is no falsity. There is no deception. Hallelujah. There is no corruption in God's word. It is man who tries to put things into God's word you know. He dilutes it. He contaminates it. He makes it powerless because once you contaminate something it is powerless. Then it becomes a poison. So this, con this contaminated, diluted word of God actually kill you instead of giving you life. Again, the source is the antichrist who wants to kill you. Because the word of God very clearly says, I think we need to re read this. Because he tries, you know, the corruption of the word becomes poison. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 and 4 says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. He has put a mask, a veil before you. My, my dear brother, my dear sister, the word of God says, when you turn to Jesus, the veil is removed. You will be able to see him as he is. Amen. So God's word very clearly says, if you seek me, you will find me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you read the word in the book of Matthew chapter 7, 7, it very clearly says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Amen. You have to take the initiative to ask the Lord. He will give you. He is waiting to give you. As a father, he is waiting to give his children what they ask. The Heavenly Father is waiting to give you what you ask. And it's a seek and you will find. A father never hides himself from the children. A father wants to have the children around him. To embrace them. And to keep them in the warmth of his love. Basking in his love. So seek him and you will find him. Then it says knock and it will be opened. God will open. If you knock at the door of God he will open it. But God says in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. But I come and knock at the door of your heart. Will you open it for me? If you open it, I will come in. And I will dine with you and you will dine with me. My dear brother, my dear sister, don't be hard hearted. When the Lord knocks at your door, right now he is knocking at your door with his word. Open. The word is God himself. Revelation 19.13 says his name is the word of God. So when you are hearing these words, actually the Lord is coming and knocking at your heart. Please open your door. Allow him to come in to dine with you and you with him. Hallelujah. Again, there is a word in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has so many thoughts for you and plans. He wants you to seek him. Ask him, Lord, what is your plan for me? He will reveal it to you. That is why Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you a future and a hope. So God wants to bless you with a future. Not only a future here in this world. A future to spend eternity with him. It is not to destroy you. But to save you. Hallelujah. God says very clearly. I have come to seek and to save the sinner. Hallelujah. But for which he would be destined to eternal death. But I have died for him. I have died for his sin, paid the price of his death, sin, that is death. I come to save him. The next verse, which is uh, part of our, uh, the topic here, verse 12 of Jeremiah 29 says, And then you will call upon me, and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Yes, he answers prayers. And when you know him, when you are seeking him, Father, tell me what my, your plan is for me. And when you pray, 
he says i then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and i will listen to you you pray to god god will listen to you you pray to a saint i don't know which saint can listen to you because i don't know where the saint is i don't making any judgment on anyone but god says you pray to me i will listen to you then next verse 13 says and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart hallelujah you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart it is not a half hearted attempt there are a lot of people who go to jesus to pray who go to i not be naming any saint because people take offense because they might be their favorite saint hallelujah so i don't want to offend you but i want to tell you praying to saints is robbing god of the glory are you with me especially god gives you blesses you and then saying for favors received hallelujah and it says 13 verse 13 of jeremiah 29 says and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart hallelujah hallelujah then from the situation that you are from the oppression the trials tribulation persecution that you are in he will deliver you he will deliver you from the captivity of sin next verse says i will be found by you says the lord and i will bring you back from your captivity i will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where i have driven you says the lord and i will bring you to the place from which i caused you to be carried away captive you he will restore you like the prodigal son luke 15 he went away but he came back he came back to the father's house and he was restored to the sonship today my dear brother my dear sister i want to tell you god wants to restore you that is why john romans 8 15 says he has not given you a spirit of fear but of sonship or adoption by which you cry out abba father don't you want to have a relationship with the father the heavenly father yahweh abba don't you want to have a relationship with jesus his son don't you want to have a relationship with the holy spirit of the living god give your life to jesus today now then you will experience his love his grace mercy compassion salvation and everything hallelujah hallelujah